The NBA's 82-game regular season needs to be shortened, so says Dirk Nowitzki and LeBron James. Here's the quote. I think you don't need 82 games to determine the best eight in each conference. That could be done a lot quicker, but I always understand that it's about money, and every missed game means missed money for both parties, for the league, for the owners, for the players. I understand all that, and that's why I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. LeBron on the issue. It's not the minutes, it's the games. The minutes doesn't mean anything. We can play 50-minute games if we had to. It's just the games. We all, as players, think it's too many games in our season. 82 games is a lot. Well, the king of it all, Michael Jordan says, as an owner and a former player, he never thought 82 games was a problem. Here's his quote. I love both of those guys, but as an owner who played the game, I loved playing. If I wasn't playing 82 games, I still would have been playing somewhere else because that's the love for the game I had. As a player, I never thought 82 games was an issue. Jordan also agreeing with the fellas that adding shorter seasons means obviously less revenue for everyone involved. Uh, Stephen A., we're picking sides. Whose side are you on on this issue? I'm not on anybody's side on this one because I think both sides have incredibly great points. If you're LeBron James and you're Dirk Nowitzki, you're absolutely right in terms of the 82 games from the perspective of you know, there are so many games, particularly, you know, back-to-back. -back. Sometimes there's as much as 20, 23 back-to-back uh, -back outings, and I think that that's a lot to ask. Um, on, at the same time, we're talking about the GOAT, the greatest of all time, and Michael Jordan, in my estimation anyway, simply pointing out that the number of games isn't an issue. And when you look at Michael Jordan and the spotlight that was placed on him and how he had to carry the sport on his proverbial back for a decade, and every single night, Skip Bayless can attest to this, this man was the greatest not just because of his championships, not just because of his competitive fervor, not just because of his greatness, but because of the fact that he accepted the responsibility of being a preeminent global iconic star that, that, that existed in professional sports, and he never cheated you. He showed up night in, night out, and you always saw the competitiveness and the effort that's there. So I definitely want to defer to him and his level of expertise. But if I'm LeBron James and Dirk Nowitzki and these guys, because of the new TV, because of the TV agreements that have been in place, the obligations that come with it, trying to find arenas, you know, with concerts and everything else, and because of it being back to backs, I think that they have a legitimate argument there. I don't know if they would complain as much if there were enough breaks within the, within the context of an 82-game schedule, as opposed to there being so many back-to-back -back encounters. And I think that's where you have the real issue. So I think they both have points because if you're going to have the back-to-back, -back, Skip, it's a problem for the modern-day athlete considering the size, the girth, the mass, the strength, the speed that they're going up against on a night-in, night-out basis and what they have to put forth to compete and back-to-backs are a hazard. But if you're Michael Jordan and you eradicate the back-to-back -back issue, the fact of the matter is 82 games shouldn't be that much of a problem, especially when these guys are, are, are not all about, but a lot about their money. Can't make the same amount of money if you're talking about digging in to the profits on the part of the league and particularly the owners because you're shortening the, N the NBA season. So question, do you think we just heard from Michael Jordan, the owner, are Michael Jordan the greatest player ever? My personal opinion is that you just heard from Michael Jordan, uh, the greatest player ever. I thought you'd say owner because you said you could see both sides of this, and I would think you would say well, that, I, that the owner was talking, you know, that the owner was trying to protect his investment here where he's saying, well, if you want to cut games, you got to give us back some of the pie here, right? No, 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 the reason why I wouldn't say that is because I did acknowledge that I agreed with where LeBron and Dirk Nowitzki were coming from because of what they have to concern themselves with. But I also remembered Michael Jordan, despite an 82-game schedule, being a preeminent star, Skip, he never cheated us. Every time he showed up on the court, he seemed ready to roll. Okay. I'm with you about this. That was Michael Jordan, the player, speaking. And I loved him, maybe to a fault. You can tell me I have... No, no objectivity, objectivity here, <laughs> but that, what Michael Jordan just said, that Kerry just read, yep. was the difference between the greatest player that was Michael Jordan and the great player that is LeBron James. LeBron, to me, I'm going to say it again, has entered a new phase of his career, and he has had a great career, no doubt, but if you do the 
the seasons of his career, spring, summer, fall, winter. I think he's sort of into the fall of his career now. He's become a global icon and businessman as you continue to so, so beautifully point out day after day after day. This, this man is a great businessman surrounded by great businessmen. But Michael Jordan, when he was a player, he was a player. And I loved his line about, if you had taken away some of my 82, I'd just go find, I'd go play at the park. I'd go play at Tim Grover's gym. I, I'd just go find a game and I'd play it all day long because he was a basketball player. I always called Michael when I covered him a supremely talented overachiever, which I'd never seen before. You always see the overachievers who are a little under talented and they just do it with guts and guile and grit all those good things. Michael had all that, but he was supremely gifted to boot. So Michael Jordan, every night, my other line about him was, if you watched him in February at, on the, the second game of a back-to-back, -back, he would always do one thing in a game and you'd say, I, I don't know if I've ever seen that before. Mm -hmm. And this is in a back-to-back -back because he loved to play basketball. Not that LeBron doesn't, but LeBron is looking at the big picture. He's now become a leader of the players. Not that he's a leader of the Players Association, but I think he's the unofficial president of the Players Association. And he's speaking in, in a bigger picture businessman perspective than Michael ever wanted to take. Michael sh shirked that responsibility. He didn't want to be that guy. He didn't want to be the leader of the players. He wanted to beat all their behinds. And he did. He was like Tiger when Tiger like Tiger was never a great Ryder Cup player because it's like, I don't want to be your teammate. I want to kick your behind. So that's Michael Jordan, the player, speaking like, seriously? You, you guys want to play fewer games? I, you know, if you told Michael, we're going to increase the, the season to 102 games, he'd be like, I'm bring it, it, man. Good. I'll have more fun next year. That's just me. Well, I mean, it's not just you. It, it, it's Michael Jordan because that's who he was. Michael Jordan... Uh, wanted to establish his dominance. I wish that there was some. I wish there was some stories that I could share with y'all, but I, I, I would never violate my brother like that. But I'm telling you right now, there are things that he did off the court, guys, that just to mess with guys to let them know he was coming. You know, I mean, the stuff that he would do if, if, if he ran into a guy in a hallway of a hotel, if they were in a sports bar or whatever the case may be. Skip, he never turned it off. This dude was, I, I mean, he, th that's where the, the term annihilate the competition was bred from as far as I'm concerned. This guy is the greatest assassin I have ever seen. He never turned it off. There are nightmarish stories that he, I could tell you where Michael Jordan would do stuff just to get guys so incredibly hyped about going against them. And they would be at the peak of their anger, at the peak of their disgust with them, at the peak of their ire. They did not always like this guy, man, and they wanted to just cut his throat, figuratively speaking, of course. And Michael Jordan would do stuff to instigate that, to get guys hyped because he didn't want you any at anything less than your best and then he'd go out and drop 50 on you skip bayless and he would completely demoralize you it, it's, it's just unbelievable that's the guy that he is that's the guy that he's always been and whatever no matter how many games it took to get you to get him to that point he would play them okay that's who he was so in the end lebron is more representative of today's players Bobby. and today's players are like hey how about 60 games. It's a different, yeah. Right? It's a different yeah. player. And yeah. then uh, Michael Jordan, clearly, they've been playing 82 games, folks. Here's your history lesson since 1967 68 season. Mm. Uh, San Diego Rockets and the Seattle Supersonics.